How does a protein get from this, a bunch of amino acids, to this, a structured protein? Here's the general gist. Once you have a chain of amino acids, they fold in a particular way to form the protein. But there are intermediary steps in between that you must take to get there. Proteins have four structural levels that it undergoes to fold into the final product. These are the primary, secondary, tertiary, and quaternary structural levels. The primary level of structure is simply the chain of amino acids strung together by the formation of peptide bonds. There are 20 different types of amino acids, and when they reorder themselves, they can create hundreds of thousands of possible combinations. Their order in a polypeptide chain determines what the protein will look like when it's unfolding. The secondary level of structure involves small folds in the chain, induced by the interactions between functional groups of local neighbors. The two main secondary structures are called the alpha helix and the beta pleated sheet. When the secondary structures are done being folded, <clears throat> the polypeptide begins to look something like this, a conglomeration of alpha helices and beta pleated sheets. So after the secondary level of structure, the third level of structure, we begin to see the protein actually forming shape. As you can see from this diagram, the alpha helices and the beta pleated sheets are still intact when the polypeptide folds in on itself to a more stable structure. This folding is held together by hydrogen and ionic bonds and sometimes even covalent bonds. So you might have like a hydrogen bond here, an ionic bond here, a covalent bond here, and so on and so forth. The folding <coughs> occurs through the attractions of side chains of the amino acids between the side chains of different amino acids and these side chains are the R groups that we talked about. The final level of structure, quaternary protein structure, occurs when a protein is a combination of multiple polypeptide chains. The polypeptides interact with each other to form a single functional protein complex. An example of a complex protein unit would be hemoglobin a protein found in the blood that carries oxygen. Hemoglobin is made of four polypeptide subunits, and these subunits, when bonded to each other, can communicate to one another to work cooperatively and carry out their jobs more efficiently. Complicated proteins usually require the help of other proteins to fold correctly, but smaller, simpler proteins can fold correctly without any help. With the right solution and under the right conditions, polypeptides can also spontaneously fold into their complex structures. The protein structure is incredibly important because it comes hand in hand with its function, and if only, even one amino acid in the sequence is off, the protein doesn't fold correctly, and this could have potentially very dangerous effects because either the protein will not be able to carry out its function or it carries out a different function that might be dangerous.